Hey, what is up, guys? And this video is going up on the five-year anniversary of Batman Arkham Knight. I saw people on Twitter tweeting about it being on the 22nd, but no, the 23rd is the five-year anniversary of Batman Arkham Knight, which, of course, is interesting because the game was supposed to be revealed in, or excuse me, released in fall of 2014, and it was delayed by nine months. That was partially due to the PC port and also just the game not being done as a whole. I wanted to talk about this game in a more objective sense because when I first played this game, I was furious. I was so pissed because it was such a letdown from what I was expecting. But now, five years later, that my expectations are leveled, I think that I can be more objective about the game. And there are things that I irrationally hated on and I think other people irrationally hated on. For instance, the Batmobile was a great innovation to the game. It was just overused in a boss fight, and it was a huge disappointment to actually face against Jason Todd in a tank battle, and the Deathstroke side mission final boss was also a tank battle, which is just absurd. So that's obviously a downside. The Batmobile itself was incredible, and the assisted takedowns when you're free roaming, you can call in the Batmobile to your exact location. It swoops and comes pick you up, or or you can throw a guy into the air. He gets blasted by that non-lethal cannon. I mean, it's really, really cool. That is an incredible innovation and advancement to the Arkham franchise, which the Arkham franchise was so good at doing from Arkham City, the free roam, extended side missions, open world is so much better than in the first game. And with Arkham Knight, the free world, uh, free open, free roam world also increased, as did the, you know, the, the utility of the Batmobile. Thing that for the first time, which they did not have in Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, and also you could just fly much faster, traversal was much better as a whole. So they really approved on a lot. The The difference between Arkham Knight and Arkham City is that Arkham City was pre-planned from Batman Arkham Asylum. If you remember, there was that Easter egg where you uh, blew the wall through uh, Warden Quincy Sharp's office, and you could actually go in and see the plans for Batman Arkham City. So literally before Batman Arkham Asylum was even done, they had already planned through the entire second game. Now, of course, they didn't have every single detail allotted because they were still working on the first game and working on getting that one done, but they had a clear direction for what they wanted to do with the sequel before they even had a sequel greenlit. And that Easter egg sat there for years and nobody noticed it until they finally uploaded it to YouTube under a fake account to make sure that other people could see it and then they, you know, it, it was out into the world. My point being is that Batman Arkham City was meticulously planned and the plot of Batman Arkham Asylum clearly led into Arkham City and it was originated and, and intended to work that way. Now compare to Batman Arkham Knight. Batman Arkham Knight is most clearly an afterthought. They had no idea what they were going to do with this third game. Of course, as soon as Batman Arkham City was greenlit, they knew that they were going to have a third game. But they ended Batman Arkham City so pointedly that they really had nowhere to go. And that's completely obvious. There is no setup for Arkham Knight in Arkham Arkham City. There is no scene of Jason Todd and you bonding with Jason Todd that would basically be a foreshadow to Arkham Knight. No, they have to slam that scene in there 30 minutes, one hour before the final reveal. And ultimately, that leads to the reveal being totally predictable. Now, imagine if we had seen the Jason Todd flashback scene of the Joker killing him in Arkham Asylum or Arkham City. And they had also planted the idea of a couple other suspects, quote unquote, of who could also have been the Arkham Knight. But that would have created an incredibly thrilling uh, finale because it really we would have no idea because they would have set up Jason Todd they would have set up a couple other people as possibilities they would have set up Hush to be the Arkham Knight more thoroughly I mean the, the side mission Arkham City didn't actually do that but if they had known that they were going to go to Arkham Knight in the same way that they knew in Arkham Asylum that they were going to Arkham City Arkham Knight would have been a phenomenal game. The problem was, it was a complete afterthought. They basically put in all of the best plot points that they really wanted to get to in Batman Arkham City with, you know, Mr. Freeze and Nora, and they they did that very well. They did, you know, the Joker death very well. They did Rachel Gould. They did Hugo Strange. I mean, they did a lot in Arkham City. Also used pretty much every villain. I mean, they used Two-Face. They used Penguin. They used all these characters, so it's not like they could really introduce them for the first time in Arkham Knight. Even the Scarecrow, you know, they totally redid him essentially which was a very weird thing because Arkham Asylum and Arkham Knight are of course canon it's the same scarecrow in both games but they look completely different and act quite different as well but I mean it's not totally unbelievable it's not that big of a deal what it doesn't matter whatever what is a big deal is that Arkham Knight was clearly an afterthought they had no clear direction from city into night and it the plot was just poorly written I'm curious if Paul Dini had a plan for Arkham Knight and if they totally scrapped it or, or I mean, there's lots of rumors about that. None of them, I think, have any validity. No one really knows what happened there. It's just very interesting to me that it seemed that City was so meticulously planned out after Asylum and then Arkham Knight 
was just a total disaster. They clearly did not know what they were doing. And as I said, I mean, Arkham City really could have led into who is the Arkham Knight and who is this character, where are they from, and they could have planted a few suspects throughout Arkham City of like, well, it could be Jason Todd, it could be Damian Wayne, it could be one other character. And then you have three, basically, you know, three suspects that you plan in that game. You propose two more in Arkham Knight, just as they, they tried to. They proposed like Jason Todd as a potential, and then they also did, I think. Really, no, I mean, the only character they really convince you to maybe be the Arkham Knight is, is honestly Jason Todd. That's the only person that anyone thought of realistically. And everyone I remember was theorizing before the game came out. Like, oh, it's going to be Aaron Cash or it's going to be these random like C-list uh, Penelope Young or, you know, these random C-list Arkham characters that they just made up four seconds ago. And of course, that would have been unfulfilling too. The Jason Todd reveal was unfulfilling. There's nothing that could have been fulfilling because they also lied in the marketing. This is a very similar situation to what we've seen with The Last of Us 2. A lot of people are upset with lying in the marketing, which of course there was deception in the marketing of The Last of Us 2. The same is true of this game. They said that it was an original character. The Arkham Knight is not an original character. He's an original character in the extent that Nightwing is an original character to Robin or that they're different characters. Of course, they're not. Uh, Nightwing and Robin, they're the same character. Their name is Dick Grayson. Uh, of course, you know, Robin has several renditions. But if we're talking about Dick Grayson, Robin and Dick Grayson, Nightwing, they're the same character. Jason Todd as Red Hood or Jason Todd as the Arkham Knight or Jason Todd as Robin. They're all the same exact character. That's obviously just a ridiculous, like, little slimy lawyer tactic to try to make it seem as though they were going to introduce a brand new character. But the thing is, a reveal relies upon your... your uncertainty or the shock of when that reveal happens you couldn't believe it it's just a random dude we take off the mask of the arkham knight and it's like it's an original character all right his name is fred williams and it's just this random dude it's like okay yeah it's an original character but there's no that the reveal is not exciting because the whole thing is that they want us to be thinking who's the arkham knight who's the arkham knight i don't know and it's it, it, if done well it makes you reevaluate your relationships with other characters it makes you think like oh my gosh you know there's like this if barbara gordon does anything weird like she cancels dinner on you you're like holy shit maybe she's the arkham knight i don't know you know so so i mean if it's done well you're reevaluating all of your relationships with all these other characters you're thinking back to the other games you're thinking back to arkham asylum and arkham city and like oh my God, who did I do wrong that I didn't even know? Or wh what character is on my bad side that's going to come back into, you know, the world that hasn't been around for a while? Or who did I think is dead but really isn't when it comes to my villains? No, they didn't do any of that. They, they just showed you who the character was 30 minutes before the reveal. It was, it was just so predictable, and I really was almost expecting it to be like an Aaron Cash, Penelope Young, or some shit like that, or or something. And that honestly would have been more interesting. Actually, you know, they wanted to name this character after the Arkham games, which I think is great. It would have been very interesting if they really delved deeper into the Arkham lore and the Arkham world and relied upon a original character within that Arkham universe. Of course, as I said, to build up an Aaron Cash, Penelope Young type of plot twist, you have to build those characters more in city and you know create a compelling reason where Batman would be surprised by the announcement because he has to be surprised. So that that's another thing. The reveal has to be a surprise to both the audience and the character. It has to be something that they didn't expect, but also not something totally out of left field that it's unbelievable. So the point is, I mean, being fair, it's very difficult to make a compelling su surprise shock reveal like this. But other studios and other storytellers have risen to the occasion and Rocksteady did not hear. It exposed a fatal flaw within Rocksteady. Their storytelling is lacking. And without Paul Dini, they have not written a very good video game. Uh, I, I assume their first game was not well written. It, it was like a shooter cop game. But it's something that's very concerning. It's very concerning for the Suicide Squad game that they have coming up that will be announced on August 22nd in exactly two months. So lots of anniversaries to celebrate five years from the release of Batman Arkham Knight and uh, 59 days until the reveal of their next title, Suicide Squad. I just remember being so excited for this game, waiting in line, and there was so much speculation. We were all wondering, who's the Arkham Knight? Like, oh my god, it, it really was compelling because we thought, well, Jason Todd is so obvious, there's no way they're going to do it. I mean, I remember having a conversation with a guy in a GameStop, as we're just like, dude, yeah, like, I mean, it seems like it's going to be Jason Todd, but let's be real, that would be so predictable, and they're building up this hype reveal, there's no way it's that obvious. Well, little did we know.
they thought that reveal was brilliant. And then you're like, wow, okay, so Batman gets to fight his former Robin. That's going to be badass, right? No, it was lame. It's a fucking tank. And not only that, it's not even a tank battle. It's not even a tank battle. It's literally a, a runaway, uh, like, Indiana Jones-style escape route with the Batmobile where you're just running away from Jason the entire time. That was also pretty lame. But there was a lot of great stuff about the game. And, and to rag on it more, I mean, I just got you excited that I was going to say something positive, but I'm going to say something negative. If you look at the concept art for this game, the city looks incredible. I don't know how this was lost in the main game, but the main game did not end up looking like this in any way, shape, or form. And that's a real disappointment. I, I mean, I really wanted to see an incredible real Gotham because with Arkham Asylum, of course, it was set in a very particular environment and it didn't matter that we didn't have an expansive Gotham. I mean, that game is so incredible. The atmosphere of that game is the best atmospheric work I've ever seen done on a game because it makes you feel like you're there. And when you see the Gotham City skyline in the background, you think, wow, this is so cool and I would love to be able to go there. But of course, right now in this moment, it's the, the, the world is so interesting on the asylum. It's like its own place on its own planet. Arkham City, of course, had a lesser extent to that, but it was still a very enclosed story and it was convincing. And we just thought, well, that makes sense that we're not seeing the entire city and we're, we're kind of taking baby steps from the asylum to city where this, you know, blocks of Gotham are, are resorted off, but not the main parts of it. And then we get to Arkham Knight when we think we're finally going to get Gotham City and there are three skyscrapers in the entire game. It's very, very flat. It doesn't feel like anyone lives here. The map feels like something that was created for a video game, not a place where real humans lived. It is by no means the worst map work I've ever seen or anything like that. Creating a more photorealistic world definitely took away from the aesthetic and environments that we got in Arkham Asylum and Arkham City. And the problem is they didn't encapsulate that by creating a real world Gotham. Like the art design style that they went for in Arkham Knight compared the, you know, Scarecrow from Asylum to Arkham Knight. We're going for a more movie photorealistic type of look. But the problem is they didn't match that with a photorealistic city. They didn't match that with what Gotham would look like if it were a real city near New York City and New Jersey and all that. It would be gigantic. There would be dozens of skyscrapers and it would be it would be lively. There would be tons of people. There would be these huge sky rise apartments. You know, it, I mean, think about how Gotham is. It's one of the biggest cities in the United States in the DC Comics lore. Not the biggest. It's not bigger than New York City or, or LA, but it's like top five biggest cities in the US in this fictional reality that we know as DC Comics. So the point being is that it was not a compelling Gotham. It was three little islands you could drive from one side to the other in like a minute and a half. That's not Gotham City. Are you kidding me? We wanted like GTA for Batman. And that is what I want to know. Are they going to deliver in this next Batman game? Is it going to be like a GTA size experience? Of course not even GTA size experience because we're not going to have the perimeter of Gotham, you know, with like the desert around Gotham and, you know, the mountains or whatever. They don't have that in Gotham. It's just the city. So we just need the city. So it would be literally like a fifth the size of GTA 5. Of course, GTA 5 is gigantic. Um, it is multiplicative many, many, many hundreds of times bigger than the Arkham Knight map. And I just want something a fifth of the size of of you know, Los Santos. I just want like, you know, the Hollywood Valley, um, Santa Monica, that area and excluding the, you know, the desert areas and the mountainous areas of, of that map and that world. That is what I want. So if we can get something that size that I really believe and feel like I am in Gotham, that would be incredible because we've gotten Arkham Asylum and it felt like we were in an asylum with Arkham City. It felt like we were in this dystopian multi-block, uh, prison, for inmates. It felt like that. In Arkham Knight, Gotham did not feel like Gotham. It did not feel compelling. It did not feel like we were really playing in Gotham. It, and you could look out in the skyline in the background and you could see glimmers of of hope of what a Gotham would look like. And we're just not allowed to go over there. So there's a lot of room for improvement there. But I think that Arkham Knight improved combat substantially. The storytelling, I think, Although the plot as a whole took a step back, the way in which they delivered the story was quite compelling. In the sense that there were more convincing cutscenes that clearly used mocap mo as opposed to animation, strictly animation. Uh, the character models look much more advanced, facial expressions are much better. And we got to see Barbara Gordon and Dick Grayson and your allies much more in person as opposed to seeing them over the computer or over telecoms. 
that was also a nice, nice touch that made it feel much more real as opposed to Barbara Gordon being secluded and you never actually seeing her. I like that we actually got to see her. We we got to save her one time, like 17 times. So, I mean, that, that was kind of a nice part of the game. So on the whole, you know, Arkham Knight did a lot of things right. It advanced gameplay substantially, side missions, many more side missions. Replayability is great, much better than the other games. And I love the free roam. You know, it's just that they they didn't deliver that grand finale. It was it was a little bit underwhelming for how high the expectations were. And the expectations we set higher than Arkham City. And it just turned out that was an insurmountable challenge for them. But I, I have high hopes for Rock City. I think they're going to do great work. They're an incredible studio. And although Arkham Knight is not the game that we wanted it to be, it was not as good as we wanted it to be. It still, I would say, is probably objectively underrated and panned too hard because there are a lot of great things about it. And I thought that today would be a great day to put all of this in perspective. And even though, to be frank, I did spend the majority of this commentary going through negatives, I also did want to take a couple minutes there and explore. Like, we were all so excited about this game. We all could not wait for it. And the graphical improvements were very substantial. The game still holds up. The Batmobile driving is flawless. The combat is perfect. It is one of the best combat games you will ever play. You know, it substantially improves upon Batman Arkham City. And they did set up something really good. They set up a really good movie-type plot. Unfortunately, the payoff was not there. But they still had great underpinnings. And they did a great job making Scarecrow more photorealistic and making it feel like we were playing through a movie as opposed to a comic book aesthetic from Batman Arkham Asylum or Arkham City. Uh, not that it's necessarily better or worse. It was just a nice evolution to see them try to, uh, you know, evolve their style a little bit. And ultimately, I mean, they really put their heart and soul into the game. I think that they really wanted the story to be fantastic. They wanted that that reveal, that Arkham Knight reveal to be great. It did fall a little bit short, but I mean, that that's in no small order to the amount of effort that was put in by this team and, you know, love and care into this product because they had worked the longest on this game than any game that they had up to this point. So they kept increasing the amount of time they were investing on the games. Their staff, you know, expanded exponentially many times over to basically meet meet the de- uh, the demands for the game to expand more side missions, more Batmobile gameplay, more uh, expansive world. And they did do a great job at improving in all of those areas. So with all that being said, you know, it's a happy five years to Batman Arkham Knight. It was one of the most important games in my life because it really kickstarted my YouTube channel. And it was one of the games I was most excited for, probably the most excited, anticipated game ever. I, I assume that is going to be eclipsed, uh, eclipsed, excuse me, by this upcoming Batman game. But, you know, I could be wrong. We'll see. All right, guys, thank you all so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Turn on the bell notification so you never miss a video. My name is Slickmoff. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.